Now, sometimes as fans of football, and especially as we start to evaluate for the NFL draft process, we discover these guys, if we hadn't already, that come from smaller schools. They show out really well in the offseason at the uh, Senior Bowl or the East-West Shrine game, the Combine, Pro Days, what have you. And we start to really get enamored with them. We start to go back and watch the film. And we find those things on film that help us understand why we started to really like these guys as prospects. And I look at a guy like Zay Jones. You talk about the son of former Cowboys linebacker Robert Jones, a three-time Super Bowl champion with the Cowboys of the 90s. Uh, the career leader in FBS receptions and coming off of a really strong week of senior bowl practice and showing out well in the senior bowl game. You know, you go back and you revisit Say Jones, who you already knew about and you knew he had a bit of a name and you knew just how productive he was. Again, the career leader in FBS receptions of all time. So you, you know this guy can play at the college level and you find those things you really like about him. But sometimes you have to be concerned about whether... Um, the production and then showing out in practices is clouding your judgment in terms of what you see in terms of the overall picture. And I think when it comes to Zay Jones, that's a little bit of what's going on here. Now, I'm not saying the guy can't play, not by any means. I'm just saying that when you watch the film and you come away with certain areas that leave you some real pause for concerns about just how productive he will be at the NFL level. Now, in terms of his strengths, I think he's got adequate size. I mean, he's close to 6'2", 210 pounds, so he's got good muscle on his frame. Um, he's not ideal height, ideal weight combination, but you know, for the wide receiver position, you have different types of guys depending on their role. So size isn't always that important as opposed to uh, quality of route running and separation, initial burst and quickness, uh, perhaps vertical speed, those types of things that are important. He's a pretty reliable pass catcher. Uh, sometimes he will struggle to hold on to the fastball, uh, which speaks to his smaller hand size. Um, he does make lots of solid catches, though. Not a ton of spectacular ones. Not saying he can't make some spectacular ones. And he does make some spe spectacular ones. But a lot of what he caught at East Carolina the past couple of years were just the solid catches. And there's nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, in terms of... His route running, I think his route running is solid. Um, I think it's actually a little bit more than solid if I look at the actual scouting report. I do agree that, that he's pretty sharp in and out of his cuts. He's got a pretty expansive route tree for a college-wide receiver. Uh, I like the way he's able to control and manipulate his lower body uh, to throw defenders off base and to be able to create some initial space and some separation uh, based off of that, based off of the role he had at college. Um, a guy that's been incredibly durable and was able to answer the bell consistently time after time throughout his four years at East Carolina. You know, and you look at this kid, too, from a work ethic standpoint. You're talking about a kid that, you know, wasn't highly recruited, went to East Carolina, got an opportunity, and you know he made the most of it. So it has to speak to his work ethic, his dedication to his craft. And he's got those NFL bloodlines that scouts are going to love. I also think he's got a bit of an underrated catch radius in terms of, well, he's not going to go out and out jump a Randy Moss type of individual or something. He has an underrated ability to high point the ball. He can catch the ball away from his body, even though, like I said, sometimes he will occasionally uh, struggle to catch the fastball, which I think speaks to a smaller hand size, which could be something to watch at the NFL level, or he might be able to work on it and it won't be that big of a deal. And you look again just at the sheer production and the pressure on him to produce and perform on a consistent basis. He was a relatively consistent performer. I mean, every week he had to answer the bell. Every week he had to be that bell cow receiver uh, for East Carolina. And I thought he did a pretty good job of that. Now, you know, there's been some buzz, I think, especially amongst draft circles throughout the course of the 2016 college season about Zay Jones. And then once you get to the senior bowl and the week of practices, and in particular the big plays that were for not ultimately in the senior bowl that he did make, and you sit there and you say, oh, dude, damn, this dude's flying under the radar. This dude has stud potential. He could be an impact number one type of wide receiver at the NFL level. And I think we need to pump the brakes on that talk just a little bit. Uh, because I have some real significant concerns about his ability to produce at the college level carrying over to the NFL. First reason for that is a real lack of quickness. He's really awkward when you see him coming out of his stance and starting into his route, he requires a lot of effort to get up to speed, like a lot of it, and you can see it. 
I mean, he's full arm pump and he's got the long stride. So he's got a mediocre burst off the line and then it takes him an incredibly long time to get up to speed. There's just in general, not a lot of explosiveness to his game. Not a lot of deep speed. I mean, frankly, mediocre top end speed and there's not really a second gear there that he can kick up to. So you start to wonder if a lot of the production that he had just came from the way he was utilized in East Carolina, came from the fact that he played against a lower level of FBS competition. And just, I'm not saying that every NFL wide receiver has to be lightning quick or lightning fast, but there comes a point in time where if a guy doesn't have a certain level of quickness and a certain level of speed, you really wonder if they're going to be able to get open consistently at the NFL level. Because I will tell you this much, even though I think Zay Jones' fundamentals as a route runner are very good, and you've got a good base to work with there, and he can run a lot of routes. The simple fact of the matter is, is once you get outside of a 5-10 to 10 yard window, at, in the college level, Zay Jones is consistently covered. Consistently covered. I mean, you watch it time after time after time. Sure, there will be defensive breakdowns, and he'll have that moment in time where he can get open, but on a consistent game-in, game-out basis, once you get outside of 10 yards and where that quickness and especially that speed starts to come more and more into play, uh, college corners were draped all over him. So what do you think when he goes up against a higher caliber athlete at the corner position at the NFL level is going to happen? If he struggled to separate in college with quickness and speed and he struggled to separate outside of 10 yards, just how productive of an NFL wide receiver is he going to be and how much of a true... Um, feature type of wide receiver can he be? I mean, and you look at it too, even though he's a bigger dude and he's got good muscle in his frame, that lack of quick twitch, that lack of quickness and in initial burst, it's going to make it really, really hard for him to be a type of guy that can consistently beat press coverage, which may really limit his ability to play outside at the next level. And it's that simple. And the one thing that concerns me as well, when we talk about a kid potentially playing on the inside, in the slot, you like those type of guys generally to be reliable pass catchers that can get open in a short area and generate some yards after the catch. Well, Zay Jones is not a guy, if you watch the film, and frankly, his stats bear this out, even this past season. You're ever talking about a guy averaging like 10 yards of reception or so. He's just not a guy that's going to make many people miss. He's not a guy um, that's going to blow by anybody. He'll run hard and he'll occasionally be able to run through a tackle. Uh, but, you know, how often do you want your slot receiver doing that at the NFL level without him potentially running the risk of getting hurt? Now, like I say, he was very reliable in college in terms of being able to answer the bell game after game after game. But if he can't get open more naturally and he can't make people miss, he's going to take some huge shots over the middle. And that's where you get into concussion city and injury city, and that's a concern. But he just doesn't have much run after catch ability, even if you get him the ball in stride. But like I said, especially if he happens to catch one outside of 10 yards, the corner's draped all over him, and even within 10 yards, even when you talk about linebackers and safeties covering him maybe over the middle of the zone, he's not going to make many people miss, and he's not going to run by many people. So you start to wonder what type of role he could really have at the NFL level. I think that lack of quickness that lack of run after the catch ability and big time athleticism could be huge hindrances to just what Zay Jones can do at the NFL level. Um, now, it sounds like I'm burying the guy, and I don't want it to come across like that because I think there is a place potentially for this type of guy, and there is a role for this guy at the NFL level. I just don't think you're very wise to expect him to have the same level of production as he did at East Carolina, or even close to it. He's just not that number one type of wide receiver guy. He's the type of guy that you look to be a sure-handed number three, number four type of wide receiver. In terms of his final grade for the draft, I gave him an 84.0, which means he's an early third round prospect, which I felt was very fair based off of what you actually saw on film. And in terms of his NFL comparison, I would say Marty Booker. Going back in the day, Marty Booker was a guy that one season had like 100 catches for only 1,000 yards. So he was very reliable and didn't get open in a short area, but expecting him to make any plays down the field, I think you were just kidding yourself. And that's exactly the type of guy that I envisioned. Marty Booker had a nice career at the NFL. 
you know, former third round pick of the Chicago Bears back in 99. That's a similar type of role that I envisioned for Say Jones. If you're expecting him to be a number one franchise type of wide receiver, I'm sorry, I just don't see it. And there's a potential that he really struggles to create a niche in the NFL because of that lack of big time quickness, that lack of ability to separate, that lack of run after catch ability. But I will bet on him late on day two in the draft if I'm a team that needs some depth at wide receiver because of his consistency, because of his work ethic, because of his durability, because of his hands. You know, that's the type of guy that I think that I could find a role for, even if he's never going to be a big play type of guy. Not everybody needs to be a big play type of wide receiver to be able to be a producer at the NFL level. And that's what I envisioned Zay Jones' role being. You know, I looked at him at first and I thought maybe Jarvis Landry, but you know, Jarvis Landry just didn't have a lot of vertical speed. He was a guy that was pretty sudden and quick, and his route running was a whole different level than Zay Jones's uh, coming out of LSU. Um, it's just, to me, he was overshadowed on film by Odell Beckham Jr. Imagine that, the same wide receiving core, Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. Uh, Zay Jones is a player, and I think he can stick in the NFL level, uh, but I think expecting him to play outside and produce at a big-time level is probably too much of an ask for him.